Right, in this video I'm going to demonstrate doing some basic simulation in LT Spice. So we're just going to put together a simple circuit and it will give you some good uh, pointers on how to begin simulating the RL circuit that you need to do for today's lab. So first I'm going to maximize LT Spice here to give me plenty of room to work and I'm going to create a new blank schematic using the button on the left hand side of the toolbar. Uh, so the blank canvas by default is grey. Um, so for this circuit I'm just going to put together uh, an RL circuit so I'll put in an inductor first so I've clicked on the inductor button on the toolbar at the top there and you can see that I, when I move the mouse around now it's ready to drop an inductor wherever I want on the uh, the canvas here so I'll click once to drop an inductor and then I'm going to press escape to close the inductor tool uh, next I'm going to select the resistor tool so that's also in the toolbar here it's represented by that zigzag line and I'm going to position that just vertically above the inductor and separate it a little bit from it. So click once to drop a resistor and then press escape to close the resistor tool. Uh, the next element that I want to put in here is a voltage source on the left. Um, there's no button for that on the toolbar, uh, but you can find it in the library of components, uh, which is revealed when you click on this, um, this icon here. It's some, some kind of logic gate, I think. Um, so that will bring up a whole list of components that you can select from, including things like diodes and transistors and so on. The element we want here is the voltage source, which actually is already selected here. And this is the standard symbol for a generic voltage source. So I'm just going to click OK and I'm going to drop one of them over here on the left hand side of my circuit. Um, and again, I press escape to close the uh, the voltage source tool there. Um, so you can drop more than one element of the same type uh, just by clicking multiple times on the canvas. But for this circuit, we just want one of each of these. And um, there's one final thing I'm gonna drop on here is a connection to ground. So this will be used to determine which node in our circuit is gonna become the, uh, the reference node or the zero volt node. So I'll click on this and I'm just gonna put this down at the bottom here. Okay, so press escape to close that. And now I'm ready to wire up these different components together. So this will form the nodes uh, in between the different elements. So I'll click on the wire tool. I um, suppose I'll do this one at the bottom first. So click, 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 and click. So that's formed one of the nodes there at the bottom. I'm gonna connect the uh, ground connection to that node to make sure that it's locked or anchored at zero volts. So that's our ground node filled in. And then I'm gonna do the node at the top here. So this goes from the voltage source to one of the terminals of OR1. And then finally, I'm just gonna click once and twice to put a short wire between here and here, making the final node in the circuit. So. Before we can run the simulation, we need to configure each of these components to set the values uh, for it. So uh, we'll start with the easy ones, which are the resistor and the inductor. So I'm just going to pick some uh, values here. What will I pick? Let's make that 100 ohms. So I'm just going to type in 100. The capital OR here is used to represent ohms. You could actually leave that out altogether and it would still be interpreted as ohms, but I'm just going to leave it as 100 OR. So that's 100 ohms. And for the inductance, um, I'm gonna put in, what will I put in here? A smaller inductance, maybe, let's say 100 millihenries. So I'm just typing in 100 and then lowercase m. And you can see that this will be interpreted as henries. So it'll be, because we put in the lowercase m there, it'll become millihenries. So that's one tenth of a henry. Click OK. So that's my inductor and my resistor. And because we're interested in this uh, experiment in visualizing the step response of the RL circuit, seeing how it responds to a step change in voltage, I'm going to use the voltage source here to produce a pulse that switches on with a step and then sometime later switches back off with a step back down to zero. So I'll right click on the voltage source. Um, if you wanted a very simple voltage source, like a DC source, you could just type that in here and you'd be done. Uh, in our case, we want to configure a pulsed voltage source. So I'm going to click on advanced. 
Uh, there are various options here that you can select for the voltage source. The one I'm going to use here is the pulse option here. And there are various values that you need to fill in to configure the type of pulses that you want it to produce. So um, I'll try to explain these uh, as I'm going down through them, but really you kind of need to experiment a bit with these yourself to get a feel for what they do. Um, so the first two are the, sim the simplest ones, I suppose. They're the, uh, the low voltage and the high voltage of the pulse. So in our case, we're going to generate a positive pulse. So I'm going to set the initial voltage to be zero. And then I'm going to say V on, which is when the pulse actually arrives. I'm going to say, make it jump up to, let's say, uh, let's just say 12 volts. And uh, T delay is the time delay before the pulse begins. So the simulation will begin at zero seconds and we want to leave some time delay before the pulse begins. So I'm just going to pick 10 milliseconds, let's say. Um, T rise and T fall describe how fast the pulse is going to rise from zero up to 12 and also how fast it's going to fall from 12 back down to zero. So in a real system, the voltage can change instantaneously. So there has to be some actual um, rise time and some fall time, which is not going to be quite equal to zero. In this simulation, really I'd like it to be as good as equal to zero. I just want to make these very short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in as one microsecond. That's one millionth of a second for the rise time and the fall time. If you were simulating a real system here, you probably want to know, put in some more realistic values uh, for those. But um, for the purpose of what we're doing here, we're kind of treating it almost as an ideal pulse generator. So I'm just putting in very short rise and fall times here. T on is going to be the length of time that the pulse remains high. So I've waited 10 milliseconds before starting it. So now I'm just going to leave it high for, let's say, 20 milliseconds. Um, sorry, I should have put in M there as well for 10 milliseconds. Um, so the pulse will remain on for 20 milliseconds. And I'm going to say give it a period of, let's say, I don't know, 50 milliseconds. Uh, the number of cycles is basically how many times it's going to generate this pulse. So we're going to see a 10 millisecond delay. Then you're going to see a pulse of 20 milliseconds, followed by a gap of another 30 milliseconds, um, making up the full 50. Uh, and it's going to repeat that 50 millisecond period, producing three pulses. Um, whatever number of times I type in here. So I'm just going to say three for three pulses. And um, if I said more than three, you know, we could have a very long train of pulses that would be produced here, but we're really just interested in the response to each individual step. So I'm just going to put in a small number of pulses at the start. Okay, we'll click OK. You can see that once you've added in um, that description of what you want the voltage source to produce, it brings up at sort of a text label capturing all of that information, uh, which is just placed onto the canvas. Now it looks a bit messy where it is there. So I'm going to move it. Um, where will I move it to? Let's just move it over here. So the tool that I'm using to drag that over there is uh, this hand tool up here. There's a move tool and there's a drag tool. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is between them, but they both seem to be able to move objects around on the canvas. So that's what I've used there. And um, if you find that things have scrolled out of view on the canvas and you want to get everything back within view, uh, this magnifying glass with the red X on it, if you just click that, it'll zoom the canvas so that everything is back in view. So that can be very useful if things kind of start to slide out of view when you're moving things around. Okay, we're almost ready to simulate, but I haven't yet actually configured the simulation parameters. So when I click on the little running man here to run the simulation, it's probably going to ask me some additional questions. So we'll uh, we'll try that. I'll click on the running man. Uh, and yes, so it's offering me different types of simulations here, like transient AC analysis, DC sweep, and so on. We're going to use the transient analysis here because we're going to we've defined a particular waveform to put into the circuit, which is our pulsed waveform, and I'm interested in seeing the actual time domain response to that, how the voltages and the currents in the circuit respond over a period of several hundred milliseconds 
uh, while those pulses are being generated. So we're interested in what that transient response is going to be. So for the stop time, what will I put in here? Let's put in 500 milliseconds for now. Might come back and change that afterwards. Um, and I'm just going to say time to start saving data. I'll just say zero. So as soon as the simulation starts, we're going to begin capturing data. Now you can configure other um, properties of the transient simulation here, but I'm not going to worry about any of the rest of them unless I need to. So I'm just going to click OK. So once the simulation runs and you can see it ran very fast there, um, the default is that it will reduce the size of your schematic, uh, the pane that contains that schematic to make room for an additional plot window. So we've really got two windows open within LT Spice now. One of them is for the plots and one is for your schematic. So currently there are no waveforms shown in the plot window, but we can add waveforms in there now that, now that the simulation has been carried out. All we need to do is click on either elements or nodes in the circuit down here and it will add the waveforms to the plot window up here. So for example, let's look at the voltage at this node at the top of our circuit here. And you can see when I hover the mouse over that, it turns the mouse pointer into a kind of a voltage probe. It's like a graphical representation of the probe from an oscilloscope, something like that. So if I click on that node, you can see what appears on the plot up here is the waveform produced by this voltage source. So if you remember when we configured the voltage source um, a couple of minutes ago, I configured it to produce three pulses. I wanted the first pulse to begin at 10 milliseconds. I wanted each pulse to last 20 milliseconds and there was gonna be a 50 millisecond delay or a period between the start of successive pulses. So this seems to have produced exactly what we want. And you can also see on the left hand uh, vertical axis here that the voltage is rising up to 12 and that when the voltage is low, it's at zero. So this is all essentially what we were expecting to see. Now, if I wanted to, I can zoom in on a region in this uh, plot up here. So I can just use the mouse to click and drag around an area here and it will zoom in the graph on a smaller um, range of time or a smaller range of voltage. So we can zoom in as much as we need to on anything uh, in the results of each simulation. Uh, when you want to return to seeing the full simulation results, you can use the same magnifying glass with the red X that we used for the schematic down below before. Okay, so one thing I notice here is my three pulses um, are all completely finished long before the simulation ends at 500 milliseconds. So in fact, we're kind of needlessly simulating longer than we need to. So I'm going to alter the simulation parameters here. And um, I'll just run that again and then click on simulate and edit simulation command. So I'm going to slightly change the parameters that I specified here. Instead of doing it up to 500 milliseconds, I'm going to just go up to, let's say 160. I'll click OK, and I'm just going to run it again by clicking on that running man there. So it's going to simulate the whole thing again, only this time it's going to stop the simulation at 160 milliseconds. OK, so far so good. So uh, what else can I uh, demonstrate here? Um, we've only looked so far at one voltage. Um, so if I wanted to display the voltage across the inductor here, um, I can click on using the voltage probe. I can click on somewhere on this node here and it will add a second waveform onto the graph. Now you can see here the two waveforms that are on the graph now, the blue and the green, are both voltage waveforms and they're both at roughly the same scale. So they're sharing the same uh, vertical axis here. However, one thing that's interesting is you can see here that the voltage across the inductor is actually going negative each time that the uh, step returns down to zero or the pulse returns down to zero rather. So uh, this is exactly what we would expect actually, but it may not be something that you're familiar with yet. So you get these negative voltage spikes uh, when you suddenly reduce the current uh, through the inductor. So um, 
So we're looking at those two waveforms there. Sometimes the two waveforms can slightly obscure each other and that sort of is the case here. So actually what I would prefer to do is to separate these into two different panes. So to add a, a, an additional pane into the same plot window, I'm just gonna click, or sorry, I'm gonna right click somewhere on the plot window and I'm just gonna say add plot pane. So now I've got two of these plot panes. Um, it'll make things a little bit easier as well if I just stretch out that plot window to make it fill the whole uh, fill the whole window temporarily. Now we still haven't lost our schematic; it's still sitting there in this other tab. So you can swap between the two tabs here, and we can select whether we want the windows tiled or whether we want to zoom in on just one window. So we can always like move around, resize the windows, and so on. Okay, in this case, I'd like to move one of these plots to the top window. So my preference would be to have the input voltage at the top. So that's really the voltage coming from the voltage source. So to move that up, I'm just gonna click, or I'm gonna double click and drag um, this label for the green plot. I'm gonna drag it up to the top one. So dragging, dragging, dragging up here, and then just drop it there. And now I've got the two, the two waveforms on two separate panes. Um, now I'd like to add on the current waveform as well. So I'm gonna um, tile the windows again here. Uh, if you wanna add on a current onto one of these waveforms uh, or to one of these plots, just click into the schematic window and you can see when you hover over nodes, you get that voltage probe that we saw before, but when you hover over elements, you get a, a current clamp is what that represents. So it's like represents an actual physical tool that exists, which is a kind of a, a loop clamp that you can close around an electrical wire to measure the current passing through the middle of the loop. Um, and that's what this represents here. It can basically, you can apply this to any one of these elements and it will show you the instantaneous current passing through it. So I'm gonna just look at the current going through the inductor. In fact, in this case, it has to be the same current flowing through all three of these because they're in a loop. So it doesn't really matter which one we pick, but. Um, okay, so you can see that red waveform has been added on there and that's showing us the current in the inductor. And it's one thing that worth pointing out probably here is you can see that on uh, this top plot here, because I've got a voltage and a current shown there it needs to have two different vertical scales so the voltage is on the left here that applies to that green waveform and the current scale is shown on the right and that applies to the red waveform and um, the few other little things that you can look out for here there's a text tool up on the bar here which allows you to add some text onto the schematic so i'll just click ok there so you can add on text using that and um, there's lots of different options for adding like labels and arrows and all kinds of stuff onto the plots here. I'm just gonna let you work out some of those things for yourself. It's good to really spend some time exploring and discovering the features of LT Spice yourself. Um, so I don't wanna show you everything here, but um, there are options there. One thing which you might struggle to find if I don't give you a bit of a hint is under the tools menu, there is a color preferences. So one of the things that you will be asked to do um, in the exercise that you're gonna do uh, is to modify the colors of some of the elements here, like the background. So you're gonna be using this uh, dialog box, the color palette editor. So the place to find that is under the tools menu and it's color preferences. So, uh, that's probably a good place to stop. Um, you'll see there's a screenshot in the instructions and you're trying to reproduce that screenshot exactly. So you, you will have to explore quite deeply in, in a lot of the different features in LT Spice to figure out how to get it looking exactly like the screenshot. But hopefully this video was useful in giving you a few starting points uh, to begin with.